Welcome. Each Excel lesson is presented in the class, um, the Moodle classroom, and so I will be trying to help you work through those exercises. Now you'll see that um, you read the chapter and then you can look at the PowerPoint slides. You can listen to my presentation about the chapter. Then as you, when you feel, you can do the self review questions, which I, I recommend all of that work. And then when you're ready, you can apply your knowledge from the chapter to Excel. You'll be learning Excel at the same time that you'll be applying the chapter material. So you'll actually be reinforcing the material as you do the uh, Excel. Now Excel lesson one is um, from the uh, analyze and think uh, section of the of chapter one. This is my first time, so I'm working hard on these. Chapter one, it's all the way towards the back. It's the very last exercises just before the new chapter starts. And um, ATC, analyze, think, I remember those two, and um, communicate. That's what the C stands for. So the, uh, those are the range of questions that you're working with for Excel Lesson 1. You'll find that the Excel lessons are all in the uh, ATC section, all towards the back. You are working with the um, ATC section, Excel, and the comprehensive problem at the end of each chapter. So you'll be working uh, uh, almost exclusively in that part of the application problems and exercises. Um, ATC 1-8 is on page 59 and um, it's at the bottom of the page and it says the financial statement for a uh, simple company are reported here using an Excel spreadsheet. Um, required, recreate the financial statements um, using your own Excel spreadsheet. For each number with an arrow by it, enter a formula in that particular cell um, address to solve for the number shown. Do not enter the arrows. Uh, when complete, um, it's asked you to print the spreadsheet and I'm just asking you to save it and post it uh, as your file to the uh, Lesson 1 Dropbox and then I will do that last part of looking at the cell formulas for you. Now at the bottom of the class you will find a spreadsheet already prepared for you and um, when you turn over to page 60, you'll see a spreadsheet at the top of page 60. I have provided that spreadsheet for you. So you will see the spreadsheet just as it appears, and for every arrow, that it's a number you have to calculate, I've highlighted the box in yellow so that you can see it easily. And I have inserted some directions towards the bottom of the spreadsheet. So there are directions and instructions that additions that you can read down there. Now, um, when you look at this spreadsheet, you'll see that it has simple company and the first statement is the income statement. And just as it appears in the book, we're going to go right down through the income statement. And then we'll go through um, the statement of owner's equity or statement of change in owner's equity, then through the balance sheet, and then finally to the cash flow statement. So we'll do those four statements. As the title implies, this is a very simple income statement. So um, the transactions are that you had $700 in revenue and $300 in expense, and so I ask you to click on the cell B10. When you click on the cell B10, which is highlighted, I have uh, solved that um, problem for you so that you can look up above in the very top, right under formulas in the toolbar and in the um, function bar, actually, and it'll say f of x, so that's the function of, and you'll see equals the sum of um, b8 colon b9. So when I um, clicked on that particular uh, B10 cell and it was empty. Then I went up to the Home tab, 
to the home toolbar, went all the way across to the far right side and saw the sum function and I clicked on the sum function and when I did that formula for the sum came up and what actually happened was it lit up all the way across the um, B8 and 9 and then I hit enter and the $400 appeared. Excel is automatically subtracting the bracketed numbers for you so that uh, they are subtractions and when I ask you in the instructions to look up to the Excel formula so you can begin to see how the cell formula looks so you can begin to put it in. If you have any questions on how the Excel computated that 400, um, I'd be happy to take an email from you or have you um, ask me again. But what it's saying is that the net income, send an email, uh, ask it, it come to a lab, ask in a lab, uh, come to class. If you're in the ground classes, come to office hours uh, for either if you're in either class. So the net income was four hundred dollars. That's what that's telling us. Seven hundred in revenue minus three hundred in expenses, and it summed uh, sales B eight and B nine. The colon means it's going to um, Excel is going to sum all the sales between whatever the indicators are. Moving on then to the statement of change in owner's equity for the year 12-31-13. Beginning common stock was zero. Plus means we're going to add. So they sold some common stock. And so the stock was issued for 6100 And then you click on um, B16, the ending common stock. And you're going to, again, um, go to the home toolbar, click on the sum function, and um, the Excel spreadsheet will highlight cells uh, B14 and 15. You press the enter key, and that's how you'll enter that formula. And if you click back on B16, you'll see that, fun that uh, formula up in the function, the f of x function box at the very top. So the ending common stock was 6100 Then the beginning retained earnings was zero plus the net income. Now you need to have uh, the net income that's up there in the income statement. And the way I want you to do this one is to use the equal sign on the keyboard and then click on the net income and use the enter key and what you'll be saying in that cell is I want this cell to equal B10 and B10 is where the net income is so if you ever have to change the net income for any reason this uh, cell will automatically change to what the new net income is so by using the equal to a cell uh, function in Excel you'll always get the answer that's in that particular cell. Next, there was a dividend paid of $100, so it's a negative $100, and we have to click on B21 in order to sum um, this retained earnings section. So again, I'm going to want you to go to the Home Toolbar, go all the way across, to the auto sum and Excel again will put in, will highlight the boxes for you. So the cells are B18, 19, and 20 are going to be summed together and the answer will appear. The answer is 400 minus 100, which is 300. And if you look up then, if you click back first on B21 and you look up at the um, f of x function bar up above at the very top, you'll see that it says B18 to B20. The colon takes in 18, 19, and 20. So um, then the next is total stockholders equity. So I want you to cl uh, click on B23. And when you click on B23, it says total stockholders equity.
Stockholders' equity, remember, has two sections, the contributed capital and the earned capital. So the contributed capital is the ending common stock, and the earned capital is the ending retained earnings. So what we're going to want to do again is click on the home toolbar for the sum, and now instead of B21, which is what it's trying to put in there for you, um, you're going to want to click on B16, ending common stock, and come out of the brackets up in the sum function, up in the f of x function box, you know, and you're going to want to use the plus sign. The plus sign is shift because it's uh, a plus, and then you're going to want to, um, because it's an uppercase um, icon on the keyboard, and then you're going to want to click on B21, the um, ending retained earnings, and you're trying here to add together the amount of contributed capital and the amount of earned capital using Excel. You do the enter and you get 6400. When you look up there, um, the earn, the um, contributed capital of stockholders ending common stock is 6100 and the ending retained earning is 300 and the sum of those would be 6400. So you have the right amount in ending re, uh, stockholders equity or total stockholders equity in this case. Next comes the balance sheet. So it's the balance sheet as of the end, at the point in time, the end of 1231-13. You have the assets first, and there are two assets, cash and land, and you're asked to compute the total assets. So you'll click on the total asset uh, cell B30. You'll come up to the Home tab um, toolbar and click on Auto Sum and the sigma sum function will light up um, B28 and 29, those two cells, and you'll enter for those two cells and you'll get the sum of the total assets, 9400. And if you look at 5000 plus 4400, it's 9400, so you have the right answer. Now liabilities come next, assets, liabilities, owner's equity, the three elements in the balance sheet. So the liabilities are 3,000. There's only one number, so you don't have to ask, add anything. But when you get to the stockholder's equity, it's more complex. So the stockholder's equity, you'll click on the first, it's asking you to compute the amount of the common stock. Now, the common stock is shown in B34. And for the amount of the common stock, I again want you to use the equal sign function and then to click back on B16, the ending common stock, and press enter so that whatever changes in the change of owner's equity section uh, statement will also change in the balance sheet by using the um, equals function for um, the amount of common stock. Now we want the amount of retained earnings, and again, I want you to use the equals function, and now you're going to click on retain, uh, ending retained earnings, which is B21, and enter, and that $300 will come in there. And then the total of stockholders' equity, you can get two ways. Um, you can sum, use the sum function and come up to home, and click on the auto sum, and those cells 34 and 35 will highlight, and you can enter, and you'll get 6,400. Now, if you look back at B23, it says that total stockholders' equity is 6,400. So you have the correct answer. An alternative way to do it, another way to do it, is to use that um, equal function and click the equal key and click back on uh, B23 for total stockholders equity. Either one of those are acceptable. Um, it's probably preferred to sum them so you're sure that you're getting the sum correctly rather than just making it equal, but um, that would be up to you as a spreadsheet creator how you wanted to get that number. Now then, you have total 
uh, liabilities and stockholders equity is your next um, total that you have to calculate. That's in B38. And now for, it says total liabilities. So the first number you're going to add is total liabilities because that's what it's asking you to calculate. So you go to home, you go to the sum function under auto sum, and you click on total liabilities and B32 will be highlighted for the total liabilities. Now you're going to have to add stockholders equity. So you're going to click on stockholders equity and now total stockholders equity is in B36. So you click on B36 and you enter and you get the total first number you wanted was liabilities, second number you wanted was stockholders equity, and you wanted the total of those, you wanted to sum them, you wanted to add them together. If you click back on B38, you'll notice that it says equal to the sum of B32 plus B36. And that's just exactly what the label says it should be. So that completes the balance sheet. Remember that the equation for the balance sheet was that assets should be equal to total liabilities and stockholders' equity. They're both 9,400, so they are equal to one another. After the balance sheet, we next want to work on the cash flow statement. So on the cash flow statement, the first item we're asked to calculate is the net cash from operations. Now the cash that came in from revenues was 700, the cash that was paid out for expenses was 300. So it's 700 minus 300. So when we um, want to know that number, we come back over to home. We click on uh, the sum function, the sigma auto sum. It's going to light up those cells for us. Those cells are um, 10 and 11. And then we'll enter that to 12 and indeed the answer is 400 and that's what we would expect and if we click on it the um, sum function is showing F10 to F11 is being added in that cell. Now the cash flow from investing um, activities is the cash paid for land. Since the cash was paid it's cash going out so it's got to be a negative number. The cash account has to be coming down because of the operative word paid. So we would expect to see that $4,400 with brackets around it, and indeed that's how it appears. Now the cash from financing activities um, is the cash that came in to finance all of our um, activities going on in the enterprise. So we had cash from borrowing money. We had no cash paid out to pay back our debts. We had cash that came in from stock, from selling stock, and that was $6,100. And we had um, cash paid for a dividend, that was $100. And so we need to find the total or the sum of all of those cash flow from financing activities. So we're going to click on F22. Now we're in the F column. We're going to go over to the Home Toolbar going to click on auto sum. Now Excel is lighting up F18, 19, 20, and 21. All four of those cells, the information in all four of those cells is being added together. While one of them is a negative number, it will subtract it automatically. So we do an enter and we get $9,000. And so if we click on the um, F22, we'll see in the, in the function uh, bar up above the F of X, the sum function of F18 to 21. Now we go on to look at the summation at the bottom to see what happened to cash, the bottom of the statement of cash flows. So when we look at the, the statement of cash flows, it says net change in cash. Well, um, the net change in cash comes to us from the balance sheet. So we click on net change in cash, we use the equal sign, and we come over to the balance sheet, we find cash. And cash is in B28. So we click on B28 and we say we want the change in cash 
to be the amount of cash we had at the end because we started with nothing. So the 5,000 was the change in cash. And the beginning cash was zero, so we went from zero to 5,000 and that's the total change in cash. Now we want a proof of that for the ending cash balance. So we can look back up here at the um, change in cash and we can go about getting that a different way than just to say the change in cash because cha the cash amount won't, be this, uh, won't always be true. So now we come to home, we come to the sum function and now we say, okay, I want you to add together Excel the cash that came in from operating activities and that will show up as F12 and I do a plus by holding down the shift key and hitting the plus key on the keyboard. I want you to do the um, cash that came in from invest that was used in investing activities and then I want you to get the cash that came in from financing activities and I want you to add those together and I'm going to hit the enter and it's going to be five thousand dollars. Now the beginning so that five thousand dollars is the sources of the cash and the uses of the cash that got us the change in cash. We find that from the statement of change in cash flows. The beginning balance was zero and so now the ending balance I can get by uh, um, ending balance in cash I can get by summing, so now I want to home, sum, I want to sum um, F24 and 25 and do an enter. Now what I notice is my ending cash balance is exactly equal to the ending cash balance in the um, assets. So in the assets the ending cash balance is 5000 and in my uh, computation from my statement of change in cash flow is 5000 they absolutely have to equal one another so you've done the work correctly. Now there are some other ideas that we wanted you to look at with this uh, problem and so one of them was we ask you to um, the book does excuse me I should I, I want to back up just a minute on the top of page 60 you can actually see um, this ex spreadsheet completed and you get a check figure so you know what all of your answers are um, and you can um, use the Excel formulas to achieve some of those. Some of the spreadsheet tips that are here are about widening a column. You can position the cursor up at the letter between the two letters and click on the left mouse and just drag left and drag right and it'll widen or it'll narrow that column. You can also widen or narrow the column for just the width you need by double clicking up at the top and um, Excel will automatically open that, cell, that column up to just exactly the space it needs for all the letters. Now in our problem we have more space than we need because we're going for this aesthetic of how that the statement looks uniform. But in other times we might want to use that double click function. And so it talks about um, that in item number one. It says in item number two negative numbers can be parentheses. They can, you can choose to do um, other types by going to the home tab, other types of numbers, go to format all the way over by the right side, come to the very bottom where it says format a cell, and then when you put in numbers, when you click on numbers, Excel actually has four different techniques that you can use. A negative sign, um, a red lettered sign, uh, a bracketed sign, or a red letter with brackets. And you can choose from any one of those three and format the numbers uh, or the currency uh, using that um, cell form functioning key. That was home and toolbar all the way across to format. It's almost all the way to the end on the right. Come all the way to the bottom of that menu for uh, format cell and then you can um, 
put in the negative number that's discussed in item two. In item three, they have the sum function, just as I showed you how to do the sum function. They have single and double lines coming in on the border function. The border function is up under home, and it's under font, and it has a menu. And when you click on the font and go just above that to the borders, it shows you all the borders that are available under Excel. You can print the spreadsheet um, by doing uh, a print function up under file, um, and you can print the formulas um, with the uh, grid lines, without the grid lines, and you can also print them um, by uh, with the formulas. So I'm going to look at number six, and it says um, print without grid lines by choosing file, page setup, sheet and unclick take off the grid lines if you didn't want any grid lines you we can do you can do that just to see what it looks like with grid without grid lines please do not leave it unclipped so we want file and then um, we want page setup and um, I think page setup is under print I'm looking Yes, um, the actual instructions for our Excel is file and then print. And when you see print, there will be uh, the very next column to the right. At the very bottom, we'll pay, say page setup. And when you do page setup, when you click on page setup, you have a lot of options about portrait or landscape and how to adjust it, what the paper size should be, where the headers, uh, the margins should be, the headers and footers, uh, putting a heading on this, and what the sheet should look like. So then you check on, you'd open up sheet, and then you'd have grid lines, and you can check on grid lines, or you can uncheck on grid lines. And um, you want to leave the grid lines on so that um, we can see those. And you do OK, and it puts in grid lines for you, and then we want to go back to um, the sheet. So now we want to go back into the problem. So we're just going to click on, um, we're going to go back to home and um, you can see the grid lines uh, there for you. And then um, I'm going to do it again and because I don't like seeing the um, the, uh, the lines that are there. So I'm going to go back to print to setup, to sheet. I'm going to click off the grid lines now and go back to OK, come back into home, and then I'll have that set up. The last thing it asks you to do is um, to come to home and to uh, look at review. And when you look at um, excuse me, look at formula, click on formulas. Instead of home, you want the formulas tab. Drift across to the right, and in um, the third to the last, fourth to the last column, you'll see show formulas. It asks you to click on show formulas, and that changes so that all we see is the formulas that you use to do these calculations, um, and there should be uh, no numbers that have been put in for you to get full credit for this assignment because it should be all formulas. This was an assignment in learning to insert formulas, and so I would want to see all formulas in all of those yellow boxes, and that's what you should be able to see um, in each of them. If you have anything other than a formula, um, go back and work on that because it's not correct. Now we discovered, uh, in my ground class, we discovered that um, you can't do much with it except look at it when it's in formulas, so we have to take off the show formulas, and then you can save it. And now this assignment is finished. You save this on your computer, and then you drop it into the Dropbox. I also ask you in the instructions at the bottom to save it as a second copy um, on your flash drive, or on your campus hard drive, or on some other um, um, exter external hard drive that's off away from your computer so that you always have a backup. Well, 
I hope you enjoyed this first lesson in Excel. I hope you realize how much you're learning with each of these Excel problems by both the um, about accounting and about Excel. Um, the two classes, this is due on different dates, so I'm going to ask each of you to go back to the um, Moodle classroom and look at the due dates and be sure that you post it before the due dates. Thank you for watching this to the end and see you the next time.